we've discovered something that actually we already knew, but now we have a lot of specific data to substantiate this. Many of you are making the mistake of assuming you know what patients want. Now, that's not an accusation, but we actually have documented proof that Clients that have assumed they know what their patients want are actually offering some of the wrong services. So the very first question we wanted to talk with our clients about is, really, are we going to get a response? Are patients and prospective patients going to want to complete an online survey? And to our surprise, and to the clients, our clients' surprise, we have a very robust response. What you're seeing here on this slide is our response rates. These are the numbers, the percentage, 44.6, 35.9, and 24.4 percent of three surveys we completed over the last six months. Uh, excellent response rate. Um, what we found on the 24.4 percent, uh, that was a client I did, we did the survey um, in the late summer. I would not recommend we do that again, but an interesting correlation on that is that even though their online response rate was 24.4 percent, we also recommend sending out a finite number to patients that you don't have email address on, printed survey, and they had a higher response rate on the mailed survey. So you're not seeing the data incorporating online and printed, because we recommend both. Uh, you're just seeing online response rate on this slide. The other thing we noticed is that within the first hour or two, we had 40 to 50 percent of all the responses are in. So what does that tell us? That tells us patients are connected. They're connected via their smartphone, via their tablets, and you know, I don't know, maybe they're just searching for something to do, but we got a very robust response rate. So we begin with a, uh, a consultation with the client to decide what it is, information, what actionable intelligence, knowledge do you want to obtain from your patients? Because we realize the survey cannot be that long uh, and it has to be executed well. There are a few standard questions uh, we will recommend that are always in there and the first one deals with patient satisfaction information. So we do ask the very simple question, very satisfied, somewhat satisfied, unsatisfied, or very unsatisfied. And we find in most of our practices that we have done, we've gotten a very, you know, anywhere from an 80 to over 90 percent. This is an actual data, 94.9 uh, percent are satisfied. The, we can then take the satisfied and turn them, look further, delve deeper as to why they were satisfied, because we asked. Now with the unsatisfied and very unsatisfied, I put that in the category as, you know, you're out checking your online reviews and you see this one patient that's upset. You may have 10 positive, but you're just focused on that one. We want to take your unsatisfied and very unsatisfied and look at those as opportunities to problem solve. But we want to begin with your very satisfied patients and to turn them into a term you might want to write down, your passionate promoters. How are they going to passionately so, promote? One of the other questions we also ask is to give us your comments. How do you feel? And we leave that feel as much as a person wants to write in. And we have a couple sentences to very long. People take time, maybe they type fast, but we've got we find that within the first hour we get anywhere from forty to eighty comments typed in and back. Um, we find that the comments are around a couple areas, their satisfaction, their love of the doctrine. Equally important, more than 50 percent talks about the staff. Your staff is key. Immediately you get great results. So here are some more actual results. What we are able to do for you is we sort them down by patient name and email. Um, you have uncovered results. I still want to have a neck, neck lift or tummy tuck but have to wait a little longer. Well, you then call that patient up and we're going to recommend and we give you tools with letters to thank but also a phone call to thank them for their generous comment and it gives your staff a very targeted message to have a conversation. Well, I got it, Grace, and I understand you still want to do a neck lift. As we mentioned, we discovered more dollars 
that you can get from the patient of records. I will return the future if I need a procedure. I would lo really love another procedure. It helped my confidence greatly. Okay. Can you do you do eyelash thinning? Cell number was provided, and this last one again about neck lift or tummy tuck. Uh, this is very yeah, good data. We advise the practice to hold a staff meeting, review all the data, give the thanks for the great opportunities that are there. So what are we saying from this? We're uncovering dollars from patient of records, and we're uncovering bonus revenue from a variety of ways. One is that we always recommend a survey completion special for the patient and their friend. It does create consultations, say like $250 off your surgery. What we found with that is patients then moved up their booking of their surgery once they figured that they could get the $250 or they didn't cancel. We also have fillers, med spa services, bring a friend. Uh, the phone rings immediately. We prepare your staff. As soon as that survey goes out, be prepared if it's, if it, when we deploy it and you're still office hours to get the phone ringing. Spend the time on the phone to thank them and dialogue with them. Once the patient comes in for their special for completing the survey, you have the opportunity to cross-promote services. We ask that you allow enough time. We also instruct that the physician comes in with the comment from the patient to personally thank them and just, you know, talk and chat and see what else is needed. The patient connect methodology does something very, very important in the next two bullet items. It uncovers what patients really want. Uh, as Greg mentioned, we had a client we did this with, and the premise was push, 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 lots of marketing dollars, billboards, what have you, on breast augmentation. Not, not at all. Not at all what the patients wanted. The market was for face, uh, surgical and, and um, non-surgical. We worked with that client to bring in a new skincare line got events scheduled, and increased the facial volume. So it doesn't mean it isn't doing the breast work, but it, also, it just pointed to a reallocation of the dollars. We can target a patient's specific in interest for follow-up with the staff. We'll ask questions, and in answering if they're interested in a specific procedure, we can give you that patient or prospective patient's name so that you can call them, thank them for completing the survey, and oh, by the way, we noticed that you checked off that you're interested in a tummy tuck. What can we do further for you? So it's very coordinated. And from getting this data, we then can work with you to identify marketing strategies, programs, and coordinate that so you have your e-campaign.